The banality of evil is a term coined by the 20th century political theorist Hannah Arendt to explain and describe this specific kind of evil that was present in totalitarian Nazi Germany. What does this peculiar phrase mean? What are its implications? And how does it fit into Hannah Arendt's thought more broadly? My name is Dr. Moore, by the way. I teach great books at St. Thomas University. And in this video, I'm going to help you understand the banality of evil. So the banality of evil is a term that comes from this very famous work that Arendt wrote called Eichmann in Jerusalem. The subtitle, in fact, is A Report on the Banality of Evil. In Eichmann in Jerusalem, Arendt reports on the 1961 trial in Israel of the Nazi war criminal Adolf Eichmann. And in that work, Arendt argues, and this is perhaps controversial, that Eichmann is representative. The way he thinks, the way he acts is representative of the whole problem of totalitarian evil. Arendt thought by paying attention to Eichmann, by studying the things he said and did, the way he acted, we could learn something about the totalitarian subject. In particular, she thought we could understand why so many people, so many seemingly ordinary people, would participate in totalitarian regimes, would, would follow orders and actively participate in crimes against humanity. This is Arendt's major question. How does that happen? And how can we prevent it from happening again in the future? So let's start with a quick definition of banality, because this is maybe an unfamiliar term. It's not something we use in everyday speech. So banality typically means trite or trivial or commonplace. And I think that third term, commonplace, is the one we want to focus on. Now, to say that evil is banal is somewhat jarring. Arendt, I think, means this term to be almost a paradox. It's, it's kind of like saying the normality of murder or the simplicity of adultery. But what Arendt wants us to understand is that when it comes to the evil of totalitarian regimes, there is something ordinary, everyday, about it. Arendt draws our attention to the fact that the Holocaust involves many ordinary processes, it requires paperwork and trains, transportation, government offices doing their job. And many of these ordinary features of human life, medicine, legislation, these are turned, contorted, perverted. Typically, when we think about evil, we're thinking about something out of the ordinary, unusual, maybe even extraordinary or unnatural. Traditionally, we understand evil to be something deviant or abnormal. And it's characterized by a bad will, by which we normally mean either a weak will, like someone who succumbs to temptation, or a malicious will, like someone who willfully does bad things. But this is crucial. Arendt says in the totalitarian context, evil has lost the character by which we recognize it. Totalitarian evil is something different. It's organized. In fact, it's orderly and even lawful. And it's defined by conformity, participation, and efficient systems like modern bureaucracies. And this kind of organized evil allows for evil on an unprecedented scale. But precisely because it's so orderly, lawful, it doesn't look like any evil we're familiar with. Totalitarian evil doesn't look like evil in the traditional sense. And what this means, Arendt says, is that evil in the modern world has a different character than it has traditionally had. In the pre-modern world, genocide necessarily involved violence and weaponry. But in the totalitarian context, participating in a genocide might look very different. In fact, the work you do as a participant might look no different than the work of a bureaucrat or a typical government official. So her theory of the banality of evil is an attempt to help us understand this new psychology of evil. Part of Eichmann's defense at his trial was that he had never killed anyone. And this gets to the heart of it because though Eichmann saw himself as doing nothing out of the ordinary. He was just doing his job, the same as any government official. He was also participating in this great historical crime, this crime against humanity. But the confusion comes in because Eichmann's day-to-day -day existence, his lived experience, is confusingly close to the experience of any ordinary bureaucrat. He's following schedules. He's attending meetings. His work looks like ordinary work when actually it's evil. So what Arndt perceives is precisely the, the scale of these new crimes necessitate. They require the, the institutions and the processes of modern life. They require modern bureaucracy. But what that means is the people who participate in these massive crimes aren't on the front lines. They aren't, in a sense, doing the evil thing in the way we traditionally understand people doing evil things. They're kept at arm's length 
from the evil, but that doesn't make them less guilty or less responsible. What it does do, it seems, is facilitate a kind of self-delusion. People participating in totalitarian evil can delude themselves into thinking, I'm just doing a job. You fill out the paperwork. You authorize a sum of money to move, be moved from one account to another account. Or you fill out the paperwork that authorizes the use of lethal force against a population of people. In both instances, you're doing paperwork. And that's how totalitarianism works. One question that really emerges from Arendt's work, though, is whether the case of Adolf Eichmann is generalizable. Is Adolf Eichmann typical? of the person living in a totalitarian regime. Throughout her work, Arendt emphasizes that Eichmann was especially thoughtless. And she argues that this is characteristic of people living in totalitarian regimes, but it's also possible that Eichmann was just extraordinarily thoughtless. So was Eichmann just a strange person, or is his strangeness, his, his odd, almost inhumanity, representative of the conditions of totalitarianism? Arendt believes it's the latter. And Given that totalitarian regimes, totalitarian evil does depend on large numbers of people turning their brains off and not thinking about the purpose of the paperwork in front of them, she might be right. One other question that should trouble us or maybe even haunt us, are there examples of the banality of evil going on in the world around us right now? Are there examples of the banality of evil in our everyday lives in the 21st century? Arendt would probably say, any place, any, any domain where bureaucracies have lost sight of human things and human conditions and instead are obsessed with data, with numbers, with processes at the expense of human beings, we see the banality of evil emerging. Wherever we see people pressured or encouraged by societal systems or structures to turn a blind eye to human suffering, that's the banality of evil. Arendt is a really fascinating and important thinker, and if you want to know more about her writing on Eichmann, you can follow this link up here. I've also got a whole playlist of videos on Hannah Arendt. That's one of the things I tend to teach a lot in great books, so you can check that out over here. Thanks very much for watching. I hope to talk to you again soon.